Welcome to TriStar Digging this morning. Appreciate you joining us. Today's little job, we are going to take the 308 and uh, we got to take down a tree up here and then we got to re basically rebuild the driveway. Uh, this house belongs to some friends of mine and and they're also viewers and subscribers to the channel so they get to watch their work get done. But when this driveway was built, this house was built, obviously that tree was in the was there and this tree was there when you're building a house um take into consideration those things that um could be in the way for the future and hopefully the person doing your house building or your excavator doing the work will kind of point you in the right directions but you know bubba and melissa didn't build this house they bought it i think you said from the original owners but this was this was set up for failure from the beginning just because these two trees were so close to the driveway and causing an issue there but what we're going to do we got the water meter here and i'm guessing it goes straight up into the house so it shouldn't be in the way we're going to take this tree out get it out of the way and i'm actually going to move the driveway over just a little bit and put a, a new ditch on the left hand side here going up the driveway and then take some of this good red dirt hopefully that's in under this sod and pack back in this ditch and be able to move that road over and slope it over to this ditch and turn it to where it comes down and goes across right here. And then on the way up through here, uh, it's kind of washed out pretty good ways up through here, up to the left and the driveway right there. But I'm gonna fix all that, put that water over there. Well, I can tell there's some good red dirt. I see it now in this ditch line here. So that'll be great. Let's get to it. We've got some visitors out here. There's Bubba and Tessa. Tessa is the boss. There's no doubt about that. Tessa is the boss. <laughs> well, I mentioned I was at my friend Bubba's house, and uh, so I walked up here to get ready to do the work, and out on the porch popped Bubba and the boss, Tessa. So we got Tessa. <laughs> she's bashful now. She's turning her head away. What do you think about that dog, Bubba? Oh, she's my buddy. <laughs> so she'll be 10 years old in June. Uh. Let her down, let's watch her a minute. <laughs> That's a little bitty dog right there. Tessa, you wanna go to work? She gonna she, look at her daddy. She's grown a lot since the first time you've seen her though, Sammy. Yeah, she is. She was all legs before. Now she's got that middle-aged spread going on. <laughs> Come here, Tessa. Say, what are you doing to me? <laughs>
Well, this is the first. I don't claim to be an expert chainsaw operator. Matter of fact, I don't really, I don't even really enjoy it, but I do it out of necessity. But this is the first time I ever had this happen. I've had chains in a chainsaw bind from sawdust before, but I've always been able to clear it. If you'll look and see, that chainsaw dust has uh, got that bar filled full and that chain stopped. So we'll get this cleared and, and get back to work. That's a first for me, that bad, to where it wouldn't just clear by itself. So you gotta loosen these two nuts on the side here that hold tension on this plate against the bar and against the saw, the saw body itself. And then there's a screw right in there. You loosen that screw and that will loosen the uh, chain on the bar and then you can uh, then you could turn it and get it cleared maybe now that thing is jammed Wow, there's the problem. That sprocket out here is jammed full. I've never had that happen before. Well, that was interesting. Let's get back to work. So I got that tree out of the way and 
uh, got a big mess. <laughs> wow, got a big mess right there. But anyway, I'm, what I'm going to do for now is is fix the shoulder of this road and a little bit of a ditch over there, temporary ditch for now. Get this road passed. We'll pack that in with the excavator tracks, and then take some loose rock down there and put back on it for now. Um, and we'll load those logs up and take that uh, excavator home and bring back the bring back the other machines and uh, may actually be able to get this finished today. I don't know. We'll try and see. See how, how it goes if I get the machines back out. Got a temporary fix put on the uh, driveway and got a little bit of a a little bit of a ditch down through there kind of <laughs> kind of uh but this is just temporary i just got to go get some more machines and um come back and fix it but i didn't want to leave it in a position to where you know if emergency vehicles needed to get up through here or somebody came in and needed to get to the house i didn't want to have the driveway all tore up i, might, I probably won't be gone an hour hour and a half maybe two hours but you never know what could happen so i wanted at least temporary this back and if i was brandon from late earthworks i would just go ahead and do this whole job with the excavator he's probably one of the best i've seen at taking an excavator and doing just about anything he wants to with it uh and uh so it's pretty impressive to watch him uh to work if you've never watched uh, elite earthworks then uh, switch over to his channel at some point and check him out a lot of you may already be following him and subscribe to his channel watching the work he does i'll also put an info card on my on this video uh a link to his uh his channel as well and don't forget to subscribe there's a new button down here on the bottom uh your right bottom right side of the screen it's an easy click button there if you're on a mobile device then you'll have to uh subscribe uh you know, with the button on the mobile device rather than the, the computer. So that's where we are right now. And uh, we'll be back in a little while to finish this job up. All right, we made it back. I've already got the skid steer off of the trailer and uh, got it up there sitting on the road ready to go. I got this few pile of wood right here, that tree I cut down. That's some good size uh, logs for firewood. So I'll take that home, put that in the log pile to uh, split for firewood. But we uh, got the road temporary fix Bubba and Tessa might have wanted to went out and get a hamburger a while ago so we got that fixed so they could if they wanted to but we're really fixing to make it nice now so here we go
found something interesting as I was cutting this ditch down through here. Um, I want to keep this ditch going at this angle and get to turn around this curve and then hit the county road somewhere and go across the county road. I guess there probably used to be a culvert or something in there, but it's gotten stopped up. So I don't want the water running across the driveway here. So I want to cut it on around here. But if you remember this uh, water meter box was in the way and I, so I couldn't turn that on around. But what I found out after talking to Bubba and looking at this box, what's happened is, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a box on top of a box. They said the reason that they did that was all the gravel and silt was coming down the driveway and filling up around the water meter and they couldn't keep the water meter uncovered. So the plan was to put a box on top of a box. So now I need that box gone. So I'm gonna take the dirt and the rock away from that box and get that uh, ditch line to curve on around through here now and not cut across their driveway anymore. I hadn't told Bubba yet, but I charge extra for manual labor. Whew, uh, out of breath. Meter box dug out around. Now I can shape this road on down around here so water will go on the other side of that meter box. I think that'll work out pretty good. All right, we got this little project in the books. So just finished it up and uh, let the skid steer cool down for just a minute, turned it off, but here's what we've got when we're finished up. I think this is probably the about the same angle we was looking at this morning when I uh, started, but I got that top water box off of that one where it's at, and it's still two inches below that now, so we lowered that a lot. Now that water's gonna come around that little terraced area, or a little uh, swell area around the bottom side of that bank can come down here in the county road and there's nowhere for it to go so it's just going to have to fan out and cross this county road right here it's the only way we can do it we got that tree out that was right there really in the way of being able to make this a really nice driveway and then to widen this out a lot on this side and all the way up through here actually on the right sides because i took it had to take out a lot of dirt out of that bank once i got this ditch cut a lot of dirt come out of that bank and with that dirt though i was able to smooth up this right side and make some yard out of it all the way up through here to the to the top what we're not what we don't really know about is water coming off that top driveway i'm hoping it's just going to fan out i put some crown in it maybe it's going to go off to the right side and the other will come down here and hit this ditch and go all the way down now so walk up here to the top side and then look back down the hill at it so that's the finished view let's go up here and see if we can get paid all right we're finished up and uh up here talking to bubba bubba's my friend but i still don't know if he's gonna pay me yet oh yeah i'm gonna pay you i'm gonna pay you what do you think about that you did a good job sammy if anybody needs any 
groundwork done, dirt work done. Sammy does a good job. All right. Sammy Pre does a good job. Appreciate he's a good man. <laughs> I don't know about all that. He's a good man. Yeah. All right. Well, you heard it straight from Bubba. He said he's going to pay me. So uh, get some money and get this machine loaded and get back to the house. <laughs> All right, well, we got that job taken care of, got it finished up, and I got all the equipment loaded up and back home and unloaded. And, uh, you know, just looking at the stats on YouTube, this is the part where uh, the statistics on YouTube show me that the viewership goes, takes a nosedive, possibly because of the Bible reading and the scripture verses and, and the message. But please just give me a couple of minutes uh, what I want to speak to you today. I just want to uh, make a quick statement, read a passage of scripture, and then ask you, a question so in this life that we are living today if we live to be 80 85 years old that's considered to be a good life uh, we've we've lived to a ripe old age so to say but I want to be honest with you this life that we're living uh, is made up of body soul and spirit that our our soul and our spirit lives in this body this body is going to die and I don't want to be morbid and and, uh, and be a downer here but this body is going to pass away at some point uh, in our lifetime our soul and our spirit then are going to live on forever in eternity. And the Bible's very clear. It says that our, that we will live, there's one of two places that we'll live for eternity, and that's either in heaven or in hell. And I know that turns some people off to say that, but it's truth. And But I want to speak to you and say that uh, this soul and spirit's going to live on. So my question is, where is your soul, where is your spirit going to live? Let me just read this passage of Scripture in, in James chapter 4, verse 14. And it says, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. So the scripture tells us and very plainly tells us that our life is just for a few years. And uh, living to 80, 85 years old, if we make it that far, is just a speck uh, compared to what eternal life is going to be. So I want to ask you this question. If, if uh, you were to pass away, your body was to die, your soul and spirit living on for eternity, where would you spend that time? That is a very important question. I hope you've stayed around and listened this far, and I hope that you're considering and pondering that. Set aside, I'm going to go take just a few more minutes, <laughs> maybe just a little bit longer here. Set aside religion. Set aside people's, uh, what they say about church. Set aside what your, your mom or your dad says or your friend or relative. This is personal between you and the Lord Jesus Christ if you have that relationship or not. Uh, that is way too important to pass by. I hope that you're considering that. If this is something that's, uh, that's on your mind, you can send me a direct message on Instagram I'll, or I'll tell you in, in uh, YouTube comments how to get in touch with me. I would be more than glad I would be more than glad to share what it means to know Jesus Christ in your life. This is too important to make a mistake. So God bless you and I appreciate you watching.